everybody, I'm Elise Explosion and I am here with the first Is It Worth It in a very long time. Now this discussion is kind of a long time coming because it Is It Worth It started out mostly as a review of subscription crates. This video is more going to be a review of subscription crates in general and our experiences with them. Truly, are they worth it? So let's begin. So I break down subscription boxes into two different types. There's the consumables and then there's the collectibles. So for consumables, I tend to list those as objects that will get a usage or will wear out after a certain point in time. For example, snack crates like Japan Crate, Universal Yums, stuff like that. Cosmetics crates like Ipsy or Birchbox, uh, Kira Kira crate, stuff like that. Clothing crates even to an extent, things like Megan Dia, Stitch Fix, but you know, what ones like that, ones where they're, they are sending you clothing and oftentimes things you can return if you do not like them. I don't have any problem with those. Those I have overwhelmingly for the most part had a good experience with. Even if the snacks aren't things that I necessarily would eat on a routine basis, they're fun and it's a good experience to try. Uh, cosmetics, again, it's it's something that even if you don't necessarily like it, either you know, you'll use up the sample that you get or pass it on to somebody else who will actually get a usage out of it. I have not used any cosmetics crates specifically, but I do have friends who have tried them out and I've gotten, you know, things secondhand from them that have been beneficial for me. So it's overall like a net win. And Stitch Fix, I've actually done a video on, I love Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix has been, you know, when, when I was, you know, working in a more professional environment rather than from home, Stitch Fix was able to basically hook me up with a professional wardrobe without me needing to set foot into a store. I, I really like them. I like the idea behind them and I don't got any beef with them. My issue lies in like collectibles crates. Man, this is this is a weird one to talk about because they're, obviously the most famous is going to be like loot crate. Nerdy crates tend to specifically target a a niche demographic. Either you're going to find ones that are like general nerd things, or ones that are more specific, targeted towards a specific property, a specific network, a specific comic group, stuff like that. Even even specific toys, because I know that Funko did. Uh, or does several like collector's corp kind of things. But the issue that I have had, and we've we've tried three on this channel. Uh, very In the very, very beginning, uh, I was one of the few people that signed up for the Think Geek capsule. I received all three of those before that kind of ended, stopped being a thing. I was signed up for Geek Fuel EXP for a couple of boxes. I think I got three of those. And for a while I was signed up for the Nick Crate, which was kind of focused on like Nickelodeon items and stuff like that. Now the problem that I had with a lot of these is that the items that I received did not have much of a use beyond decoration. And I've got a couple of touch points on this that I'm going to come back to, but this, this is the first one. So like, you know, you get the box, you open it, it's cool, there's things in it. What are you going to do with those things? My uh, main takeaway was opening the box, going, oh, that's neat. And that's the, that's it. Yeah. That is all the Abs joy that these things ever brought me. I absolutely agree with that. You know, so we, we had fun doing the action of the opening. And I, I know that a lot of these basically exist because YouTube decided to latch on to them because it was a fun and interesting thing to see what's in the box. But for me, I found that specifically with like the nerdy crates, there were like four things that I could guarantee seeing at any given point in time. You would see Game of Thrones or other similar prestige television, American prestige television at that. You would see Harry Potter. Ugh. 
you would see Marvel stuff, but more specifically stuff from, like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So you wouldn't really see any, like, Ms. Marvel things, but you'd see, like, Doctor Strange or the Avengers, you know, Spider-Man. And finally, I don't know if this was just the ones that I got, but I tended to see a lot of stuff from, like, Firefly. And I just, I have no attachment to Firefly whatsoever. There would also be, you know, specific crates that would focus on specific properties. And I mentioned that before. And I've, you know, we did the Nick Box. And Nick Box is presented by Culturefly. Culturefly does other boxes. Like, I know right now they've got, like, a Seinfeld box. Uh, I've seen them, I think they do the Pusheen box. They've got a couple of others, ones that I'm not particularly interested in, but their focus is more narrow. But the problem, again, lies in the contents of the crate. There's a lot of stuff that you pull out, as Karen mentioned, you say, oh, hey, that's pretty cool, but you have no use for. For example, I am surrounded right now by several things that we have had I think most of these are from the uh, Geek Fuel yeah. EXP. Yeah, these are mostly from the Geek Fuel boxes. But like, okay, we have, it's a light that looks like a Game Boy. It's cute, it makes the noise. Do I use this? Not really, it's just kind of a novelty. Uh, we've got, there's a, a comic book, which is like, there's no context between it, it's just like, throw everybody in the same thing and there's all it's like a one and done custom edition not for resale if i were a collector of comics it might be interesting but i just don't particularly have any interest or investment in this exact run like this exact run and like i love i love thor um i think this might be miles morales spider-man i can't tell but it's it exists it's fine, I guess. We never read it. Never read it. Um, we got a couple of these. They're like stretched canvas prints of like the first appearing issue of various comic books. Clearly it's not on my wall. Clearly it's not on display. I think it's, we gave one to Sarah. Yeah, gave gave one away. I think we had an Iron Man one that I gave to Sarah. It's We had one in each box. There was a Hulk yeah. one, an Iron Man one, and an X-Men one. Yeah, so we, we have them. But they're, they're not displayed. I don't really have any particular interest in them. They're nice, but they don't, they don't serve me any purpose. And I think that a lot of the times the items that are in these boxes are just things that collect dust. You know, they're, they're figurines, they're statues, they're, you know, things to put on display and look at and ooh and ah, but are you really, or do they don't retain any value. You know, it's not like they're that truly limited edition if they're showing up in every one of these crates. They're just effectively lumps of plastic. And I love me a good lump of plastic. I mean, half of my room here is lumps of plastic, but they're ones that I get enjoyment out of. They're ones that are, they're toys, not just statuettes. <laughs> you know, they're, they're not, I don't know. There's something really, unusual and and on top of that honestly a lot of these crate services a lot of them just vanish into thin air straight up uh when i first started doing youtube i had been in talks with a company that wanted to send me crates to review and nothing ever showed up never heard from them they ended up folding and disappearing so they're either not here anymore and the ones that are still here are under like they're really suspicious at this point. Like, I, I know that there have been uh, many large issues with Loot Crate. Uh, I am not going to go into them because I am not 100% knowledgeable of the circumstances, but... I'll we'll uh, have some links in the description. Put some links in the description so we can kind of look into that. Also, um, there's sort of vanishing, uh, diminishing returns on these. The longer you yeah. stay subscribed, you start getting the same stuff over Ex and over again. Exactly. And that's, you know, I can I can trace that back to Japan Crate. That's actually one of the reasons why I stopped getting Japan Crate, uh, because I felt like I kept getting a lot of the same stuff. But if you get the same flavor of Kit Kats twice, it's a lot easier for them to go than getting the same Harry Potter socks over and over right. again. Exactly. You know, it's, it's one thing to get 
the same snack because you're still going to eat it, especially if it was tasty. It's just not new. It's just not new. What are you going to do with four pairs of the same pair of socks? I, I know that there is definitely a market for these niche geeky things, but at the same time, a lot of these properties aren't really that niche anymore. Game of Thrones was like the most popular show on television. The Marvel Cinematic Universe are some of the highest grossing films of all time. Is that truly geeky anymore when it becomes that mainstream? That's a question for another video. But at the same time, it really makes you think like, okay, well, we're only getting stuff from like these blockbuster franchises. What else is out there? You know, and, and I know, I know that there are definitely services out there that are a lot more curated. Uh, I have a friend, I, I know several friends who are subscribed to like video game collection boxes where they send, you know, retro video games at up to a certain price point. And that's kind of cool, but knowing me, I'd probably get like 20,000 copies of Madden 08. There are also, I, I know that there is one of the ones that I don't have any particular interest in, but one that I've seen that if you're into that kind of thing would be pretty cool. There's one called the Ska Box and they talk to a lot or they work a lot with smaller indie bands to get local music out to a more diverse audience. That's awesome. And like, I don't have any particular invested interest in ska. It's been a long time since I've ever wanted to pick anything up, but that's really cool. I like that is- get the ska box just to feel alive. <laughs> I feel like that's a really cool and unique way. Work with smaller creators to get stuff out there. That's cool. But when I'm getting like 20 Game of Thrones figures in one box, I just, who even cares about Game of Thrones anymore? Didn't you, weren't you all disappointed in the ending? Don't you all hate spending all that yeah. time on it? It's just, I don't know. So I think Walking Dead is still going. Yeah, well, Walking Dead's never going to stop. It's all zombies. That leads me to like the greater point. Is it worth it? At this point, I can't say that they are. Like I said, if, if you're interested in the consumable type boxes, I will recommend those for the most part. Those have all been very good to me in the past. And even if they're ones that I'm not subscribed to anymore, I can still recommend them for what they are. You know, if you are interested in things like the Ska Box or smaller ones like that, they're out there, take a look for them. Look for smaller creators working on things like that. But these like big name nerd boxes, it's really not worth your money. I think to, uh, to tie this video up, uh, we are going to be doing something that I've been threatening to do for like two years and haven't done yet. This video is not sponsored by anybody, of course, but this particular item came from a Geek Fuel, Geek Fuel EXP box in like 2019. And it has just been sitting. It's on... been literally on a bookshelf in yeah. this room for two years. On a bookshelf in this room for two years, in the box, in the bag. This is a candle shaped like the fertility idol from one of the Indiana Jones movies. I don't remember which one off the top of my head. I mean, it's on the box, but again, if we cared, we would have like been yeah. more excited and used the candle maybe. But it's a candle. It's not scented. It's just painted. It's not scented? It's not scented. What's the fucking point? I'm, so I'm sorry. Is it I'm truly so worth it? I'm sorry. Maybe it's time. Footage. It's time to light this thing. That is not on the screen. Like, I know. I'm going to pick it up. Don't worry. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Finally, I'm using it for its intended purpose. I'm whelmed. Yeah, it certainly is a candle and it certainly is burning. What do you think about subscription crates? You know, do, do you still think that there's, there's much merit to them? Do you get enjoyment out of opening them? Do you get enjoyment out of the contents of them? Let me know in the comments down below. I just have one thing to say. Sure. I uh, definitely got more enjoyment out of just watching people unbox them than actually having them shipped to our house and unboxing them yeah. ourselves. Because when you watch someone else do it, you get all of the joy of the experiencing the novelty of the unboxing without all, without the crap lying all of the crap. So thank you all so, so much for watching. Uh, if you are interested in supporting the channel a little bit further, I do have a Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash Elise Explosion. 
Um, originally, some of that money went towards getting subscription crates. I'm not doing that anymore. So uh, if you have any suggestions on what we could be doing around these parts, take a look. Might be a little fun. Click the little bell, because if you want to stay in the know, the bell is the way to go. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.